Hello, I'm Michael Rachel, and welcome to a Stormworks Modular Engines tutorial video. Alright, let's get started. I always like to have the engine parts the same grey, so I picked the grey over here. Then we need a crankshaft. I will go with three here, so we will end up with three cylinder up here and three cylinders on each side, leaving us with the nine cylinder engine. We don't need that clock anymore, so let's get that away. Then we need a belt. That goes here. Then we need a pump and a starter. pump goes below why you will see in a minute and the starter goes on top then I will also grab an alternator but you also could use the old generators on the back later so let's put that there Now we will add the cylinder. There we go. Now we need a platform that goes in front here for the radiator. I will go with the 3x3 electric, that should be more than enough. Make sure connections are down then the platform can go and now we need the cooling manifolds they go on that side grab some pipes just to easily identify the cooling pipes I make them blue And with the new patches, you probably don't need two of them, but why not? Better too much cooling than not enough. Get rid of that, and a T piece in here. And we're adding a little water tank in here. Make sure you select it, set it to fresh water and empty it to like 20% because the issue with the in-game fluid system is if you have the pipes full of fluid they kinda tend to clog themselves up. I'm not exactly sure if that was fixed in an update but why not use that method it can only help with cooling. Let's get back to the gray and if you're wondering how you can grab these parts you simply hold uh, control and then click on the place part and that will clone it. Let's add air. We need the air manifold. I like to put that there. Come on, place. And I could use that, but then we can't build anything on top of it because for some reason they need to occupy that place but the few uh, the, the scoops where are the scoops there they they don't have that issue just face it forward and done so air goes through here into the food then do the scoop and into the engine we all need a battery small one and place it here we also need a clutch because there's no other way to get the power out of here without adding these clutch pieces which is a little bit weird but it's fine and so the cylinders share all the things we need to collect them at least once 
So that row needs to be connected with that row, needs to be connected with that row. Just for visuals, I add these pieces here as well, so it doesn't look so weird. But you only need one, like I said. Next thing is fuel. So I like to put it over here. And make sure you only use one fuel manifold and one air manifold. So the old method that you use two air and one fuel to have a good ratio, that doesn't work anymore. They, they patch that out. And of course we need exhaust. Let's put that here. So, because if you use that in the car, that would be probably the bottom of the car. So that's where the pipes go. Now we need a constant number. And that can go, let's say, here. Set that to 1 and go into the logic. So we connect that number to not the throttle but to the clutch pressure of the fluid pump and the clutch pressure of the alternator. So they work right off the bat. I don't know why they added these clutch settings to these two parts but maybe it can be useful in other cases. Also we connect that to the clutch back here because we don't want to use that as our clutch we just want to get the power out of the engine and the only way is using the clutch so we want that clutch to be always engaged let's add a little pipe over here and add the actual exhaust so exhaust is sorted cooling is sorted Fuel is sorted but not connected to the tank yet, so let's do that. But for that, I probably build a little platform first. And I like to use that gray. That gray is actually the same gray as the border of the monitor, so if you wanna have a dashboard that matches that color, it's 85, 85, 85. Let's go down here, leave some space below in case we have to crouch underneath there to check stuff. Three should be fine. And that for So that should do. And it doesn't have to look ugly, so let's just Add that yellow line around it as, as warning there, there's an engine and we don't need that anymore now we need a fuel tank we make the dark red because why not then similarly off again oh, sure that lines up does it no that should yes And there we go, fuel is sorted. Actually, I need it to be a little bit bigger. So we have space for logic later. There we go. First, I show you the most simple setup with uh, just a throttle lever and a key button. Also, let's add a dial for RPS. There we go. But we already need a little bit of logic. First, we grab a function plot. Let's put it right over there. And we set it to X, divide it by 2. Now let's move to logic. So throttle goes in the function block, 
but throttle also goes into the air manifold and the function output goes to the fuel manifold so what it's doing is giving half the throttle to the fuel than to the air throttle which gives you a nice ratio that works for almost everything then our RPS goes to one of the manifolds and now we need a little other logic I always have some decoration blocks for microcontrollers so I can set them up pretty quickly let's get in here and set it up make it like two by two should be fine for now we will see so input ignition that's where the key comes from then another input but the number that will be the rps and on off output which is also ignition but that's what's going out from the controller into the actual engine stuff and i think that's all we need for now go into the logic move them apart okay what we want is that the starter only works as long as it below a, a, a certain RPS so first we need a property number that way we can simply configure it in the microcontroller using the select tool instead of having always to go into the microcontroller. And sorry that, that was <laughs> that was a bike in the background. <laughs> so now we need a less than. And an uh, add. So if the RPS is less than the property number, so if it's below the ignition RPS and the key is on, then it will ignite. Otherwise it won't. So let's set that to 2. So below 2 RPS it starts again. Save that and go back in logic. Now the key goes in here, that goes to the starter. And the key also goes to the fan, so when we turn the key, the cooling starts to work as well. And RPS, we grab that here again. So now next. We need to hook up the electricity. So the alternator goes to everything and the battery. And I don't think they need electricity, but let's just give them electricity too. And let's try it out. I'll we'll give it a little bit of throttle here and move the key. It's going down 2.1 and when it's going below 2 it ignites again. We will see soon. See, there was ignition. So we need to add a little bit more throttle. Yeah. 
And of course that's a little bit weird right now because that is a sticky throttle and later on a seat we would have not a sticky throttle. And for that reason we also want the auto idle which we built in now. So let's add now auto throttle. Well we need a few more. Make it longer. Well we need a few more notes. So we have a number in and a number out. So we have a throttle in and a throttle out. Let's move them up here. Now we grab another property number, no not slider, number. That will be our idle RPM. Let's set that to about 4. So if RPS is less than idle RPS, we get an on signal here. Now we need a switch box. Numerical switch box. Yes. So if the RPS is less than the idle RPS, this goes on. And the on signal will be the output from a pit. Otherwise, it will be our throttle input from the seat or the lever or whatever. And that goes out to the throttle. Now let's add a pit. Look, that also activates the pit here. And the output goes in here. So the set point is our idle RPS and the variable will be the RPS. Now we just need some numbers. Let's start with point 0.1 and leave the others to 0 and see what it does. Okay, now I don't give it any trouble, I just start. It does work. Oh, of course, the ignition starts the pit, not the last stand. And also, we need to clamp the pit output. We never want it to be greater than 1, and the lowest it can be is 0. That goes there. And the numbers, let's try 0.2 and 0 0.0000001. And 0 .0, no, 0.0000001. That should be smooth. Let's try it again. No, oh, it doesn't. It, it doesn't like that for some reason. Oh, of course it doesn't work. <laughs> I forgot something. So, <laughs> throttle goes now in here. That throttle goes in here, and that throttle goes into the no, not the fuel, but the air. There we go. 
Now it should work just fine. Look, there we go. Well, we set it to 4, I think, and it's at 3.58, but some number tweaking in the in the pit should be fine with that. Mm, but manual throttle doesn't work? No? I must have messed up something else. Oh yeah, if the throttle, we, we are not using RPS here, if, no, if pit is less than our throttle input, no, the other way around, that goes there, that goes there. So if our throttle is less then what the pit puts out that's yeah that's what the switch box uses and the idle rps only used in the pit controller i'm sorry <laughs> i hope i don't confuse you too much but i usually do all that stuff and do i'm i'm more of a of a code guy than than a logic block guy Let's test it again. Yeah, manual throttle works. Let's set throttle to zero. Should idle. Yes, it's idling. So that's working just fine. Anyway, you're using a seat instead of the throttle lever and you already can get the working car. And if you still have questions, just leave them in the comments and you're also welcome to join our Discord where a lot of helpful people are. The link is in the description. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, do subscribe, all the cool stuff and share with your friends. Thank you for watching, keep the ball afloat, I see you next time, bye bye.